Well, she did. Well, your elk did. Uh, your elk dropped. Yeah, she and then got up. And then, oh yeah, sorry. She dropped. She hit the ground. She yep. got up. She walked ten yards and fell over without any. It was a single shot. Yep, single and, shot. And yeah, when he throws a pitch, it was the most bloodshot damage I've seen on one side under the hide. Keep going down. It was. It was spread. Half of the body. Yeah, was bloodshot. Top to bottom, down. back to front, underneath the hide. The was crate. It, it's like I said, she was pretty hard angled away, and in my mind, I didn't see that quite as much. So when I shot, I hit her about second to last rib. Mm. It, this goes back to 782 yards, six millimeters they claim don't penetrate, and you need a hunting bullet to be hard. It had to go from the distance, had to be 30 inches yep. and exited. So yep. it went 30 inches of liver. I, I think I don't know if I hit the liver, but let's just say it hit the fuck, it, it took a rib out, took all the lungs out. Yeah exited out right behind the shoulder, breaking another rib, and left the elk. Yeah, went through two ribs. Through two ribs. The first rib, the, the I don't even know what we're going to call this, the temporary wound, whatever. The blood shot that expanded underneath the high, it was it was three feet by two feet yep. of an area that was solid blood shot. Yep, I wouldn't want any more. That's enough. Yeah. Yeah. So it, the six millimeter, the 115 d tech, it was about 2,200 feet per second impact velocity. 1,000% did his job. Oh, yeah. And away we go. Hello, everybody. This is the Shoot to Hunt podcast, and my name, you all know it, is Ryan Avery. And my co host here is, um, Mr. M- Mr. It's Jack. You mean Mushaney? No, it's Mur. M- it's Mushaney. Oh, We've it's been over this. We've been over this. Damn it! Ah. You need to take those damn Crocs off. Yes, <laughs> and wear some real man shoes. Wow, you're aggressive today, Mister well, Mister Mushaney. My sea levels are currently pushing three thousand right Holy now. Crap! Yes, my beard is down to my knees. Your, yes, your veins, they're flowing. They're flowing, they're and uh, and I must be at 5,000 by oh the end of the year. My. You're going crazy. Well, the, the crocs are thinking this every time you get in them. How fat is your ass? Really? Fat, round, and ready for this podcast, my friend. Let's jump into it. Let's go. Not much to say anymore about it, you know. They're special. We've already discussed it. I feel like I should bow now after that performance. We have Luke. Luke is on the podcast today with us. Maybe the first Probably. time we heard it. Yeah. Now it's been like, you know, for, for me, it's been like four or five, six weeks, whatever. I'm ready for the next one. Keep it coming, man. I'll keep them coming. <laughs> I want to um, take this time to tell everybody that listens to this podcast or the Rock Slide podcast, if you have a problem... The video didn't go up in time for the Shoot to Hunt podcast. They're working me like a slave. Normalizing the <laughs> podcast. You need to email marketing at shoottohunt.com and bitch at Luke. Oh, I was me. about to say that for you. Oh, I was about to, I was me, about to start oh, that off with wow, you. Wow, me and Jake, That's we we do this. You know, we come in, we're the talent. <laughs> <laughs> we drop bombs and fucking leave. <laughs> so those problems are all Luke. And if, he's, if there is a problem, yell at him. Well, we know beauty isn't your strong suit, so... That's right. That's why we're on a podcast and not fucking. Yeah, I guess we are on that's video. That's why we're on video, but it's like <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, yeah. you see the, the, yeah, the hands yeah, all yeah. pulled down. Yeah. So <laughs> that's all, Luke. Luke, can you uh, can you tell us why some of the podcasts? Episodes? Yeah, the video is uh, being edited on the way over to this hunt. Actually, I'm about three quarters done, guys. So if you can just just take it easy on me, all right? We'll we'll be okay. We'll get it up here sooner or later. So I guess the, before we get too far, the fishnet stockings. Jake has never heard of the fishnet stockings. Good Lord. For, I, I, ha, I like to only talk about shit that I have used. I've never used them. I read the science. It sounds basically, I, I don't know. Hey, blow, blow one of those up there, Rhett. One of those shirts on the top. Form pimps them. Form loves them. I have never used them, so I have no fucking yes or no. I don't know. So as I understand the science correctly, rather than have an entire shirt we're gonna poke a bunch of holes in your shirt, and that's gonna make it warmer. This is this is the science as I understand it. Go for Forum it. is gonna be laughing his ass off. He's gonna hear so that shit. science is basically it's wool, it breathes fast, keeps you dry, keeps you warm. The way I understand it, I've never used them. Two, <clears throat> there's two reasons: is I ain't gonna look like that, mm-hmm. and I would have them for like five days, and they'd be fucking torn to shred. I feel like Forum does stuff just to have conversation starters. 
You look at him and you're like, why are you wearing those boots? <laughs> why are you wearing that? And he's like, oh, let me tell you. And then it just goes down 12 minutes down the but road. But he has like good arguments. Like, Oh, he does. Like when he said, you should use a six millimeter for hunting. I was like, man, well, it's fucking high as nine Indians. Yeah. You know, it sounds good, but I can sling bullshit too. Yeah, but like I try to shoot holes in his boat. Uh-huh. And I would say 90% of the time, unfortunately, he's generally right about well, most of the Well, when it comes to this here up on that screen, I would say, uh, so my daughter buys pants all the time that are missing like 50% of the denim. Hey. Right? And they're not warmer. Because when I touch her fucking knee where there was a big hole and there was no fabric, it's cold. Okay, we're not talking about gaping holes. We're talking about... Well, when you say fishnet, dude, like I picture fishnet, fishnet like a fishnet. Fishnet hunting base layers, Rhett. Mm. See where I can see all hey, that skin on there? Hey, show uh, Rhett the picture I sent you. Oh, fuck. Here we go. We found you uh, we in found some you a set fish of nets. Oh. No, we found, him. we found him in fishnets. Oh, look at rock slides right there. Fishnets, they work and you want them. Let's see who started that. <laughs> there he there is. That's what he was wearing. That's... We found you. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a picture of Borat. And he has some fishnet shirt and underwear on. Oh, oh. no. Yes. Oh, geez, that's glorious. If you scroll down, go you back up. You guys actually have a striking resemblance. Go back up a little. Yeah, right you, there, you and Borat. It's like, yeah. in the actual thread. Look, like you look. could be his son. Yeah. No, nope, there it is. It's in the thread. <laughs> so let, let how us, do we even get on this fucking coverage? I don't even get uh, it. Because you didn't notice that he had the fi- the form had the fishnet stockings on this whole week. I think if he yeah. really had fishnet, cause we got we got to stop calling them fishnet because the fishnet. Go to the top of that right, top of that page. What are those? Uh, you remember that that band called the Village People? Yep. If you bring up a picture of them, I think one of them had fucking fishnet shirt on. Fishnet base layers. I don't even know who makes them. The Village People. The Watch, Village People. There's gonna be one of them in there. Them. They didn't make them. I, I, I'm thinking of some gay band that had a dude that would always wear a, a, a fishnet shirt. Oh, I think dude, that was Queen. Yeah, Queen. Queen. Oh yeah. That Let's was, try Queen. Let's yeah. lead to your Queen's name, dude. I Let's don't try know. Queen. You there it is. Ideas, there yeah. it is. That's who I'm thinking of. That looks like form right there. I think I see a nipple. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yep. That's the movie. Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury. Mm-hmm. Poor guy. Well, that's not exactly what we uh, we're going to talk about today. We just got back from Montana. <laughs> we did a fucking all, basically a all inclusive elk hunt. It's pretty fun. Cow elk hunt. Shoulder All season. inclusive is right. All inclusive. It was pretty freaking Rooms, awesome. food, guides. And I'm, I'll just, on my side, when, you know, you you do, I do a lot of things DIY. Jay, we all do a lot of things DIY. You know, it's a rock slide way. I rarely pay for anything guided wise. But let me tell you, after busting your ass all fall, fucking walking in, having a fucking you know, little food, little bed real quick. You know, you wake up, you have food. Before you go to bed, you have food. It's nice and warm. It's fucking nice. Yeah, it was nice. Luke nice. doesn't know much different, really, but it was nice. <laughs> oh, I spent, I think, Shut like 48 days, 46 days on the ground, sleeping on the ground. It's fucking nice not to sleep on I the guess ground. I think I was the only one that was excited to go hiking. When we when we found out this was the second day, we actually had to hike a little bit. These guys' faces were like, are you freaking kidding <laughs> when me? we were driving up, and the, we had, we got an, it's fucking really hot for this time of the year. It's really warm. Yeah. It was really fucking muddy and soupy, and we didn't want to fuck yeah. up the rancher's road. So we hiked in, and when he said that, I was like, God damn, I fucking <laughs> hiked all fall. My fat ass got to hike up this hill. How was your expectations and and the overall experience? Well, I didn't know. I mean, I've only had one outfitter experience before this that was not good. Nope. So you go in, I guess, without high expectations, and uh, so I guess we should we should name drop and all that good shit. So it's Absaroka Beartooth Outfitters out of Big Timber, Montana. Uh, the owner is Cameron. Is it Hayes? Mayo. 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 I don't know. Why I keep thinking Hayes in my head. Cameron Mayo, uh, ridiculously nice guy and a wealth of information and knowledge. He's got a big team of guides and cooks and all that good shit, and uh, they got a nice website. Mm-hmm. Plenty of access too. Yeah, he's got ranches that he leases all over the place. I mean, just beautiful, beautiful country. Yeah, he leases a lot of private land, and then if you want the DIY feel of a wilderness backcountry DIY hunt, he mm. offers those too. Yeah, you can go up in the wilderness and do it. You know, the old cowboy way. You ride in on horses and mules and wall tent it and hunt some steep ass mountains. Mm-hmm. For all of you uh, fly fishermen like myself, he does have an opportunity to go twenty miles in the backcountry. 
camp for like a week, horses and everything. Yeah, that thing, that sounds awesome. Not to me. Yeah. I'm not. A, They'll I'm get not it a, one day. I'm not we're, a fish we're going molester. all in on horses and shit. So, something big better die. Well, you yeah. Can, I'm not a fish molester. Well, if you go out there during bear season, I'm sure you can pop a bear too. That'd be good. Get the bear while he's eating fish. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Two birds, fish, one stone. Throw a fish for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he does it all. He does uh, elk, deer, bear, sheep, goat, whatever. Antelope. Whatever, antelope, whatever's legal in the state of Montana. He offers a hunt for it. He's got a bunch of summer adventures too. Waterfall yep. seeing that you can't get to other than horseback horseback adventures. Uh, what else was he doing? Turkey. Oh, yeah, turkey. For all you adventurous people out there looking for a challenge. <laughs> 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 it vermin. Yeah, it was fun. So basically we got out there, and, you know, it, it was weird because we talked before I went, and Tanya's like, so you're just going to go over there? You haven't done any scouting or any? I was like, nope. She's like, who are you? <laughs> I was like, Jake said it's legit. We're rolling. Oh, Jake said. He, see, he, he left himself an out there just in case it didn't work mm -hmm. out. Oh, Jake mm -hmm. said. Yep. I do the same thing you do. Leave uh, yourself one out every time. There you go. Well, what happened was is uh, is Cameron reached out because he needed a rifle for a trip he's about to do in, and I always say this wrong, to Tajikistan. Yeah. Tajikistan. Tajikistan. You can almost it? put any letter in the front there, and it still stands the same. Tajikistan. Yep. So he's going out there to kill some animals and uh, wanted a rifle to do it with. He was recommended uh, to contact us by one of his buddies. Yep. And Thank we said, well, why don't we just build your rifle, and then uh, we'll trade, and we'll come out and check out your place, and worked out pretty good. Yeah, thanks, Ben Reynolds. Yes, thanks, Ben Reynolds, for making that connection there. It was a blast. Uh, we're actually going to maybe reach out to you, too, Ben Reynolds, about coming out to Alaska soon. Yes, I want to do a DIY Alaskan float trip or somewhere caribou. Back, some caribou, maybe yeah. figure out a way to shoot some grizzlies, interior grizzlies. But yeah, if, if you know anybody, anybody else out there that knows kind of the how to do it because we've never done it let us know so we went out looking around pretty good on the first day uh, well first i mean we arrived there we arrived in the afternoon uh he you know cameron came out and met us there and showed us all the rooms and the food they had dinner ready that night uh it sure is nice to have home cooked kind of meals versus yeah the shit we're used to and i f i fight this like internally like i want to do this all myself i've done it all myself my whole life but on the flip side it's also nice to have that stuff already laid out and done for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you cave so quick. No. <laughs> I, I, I just spent three months of not doing that. It's so yeah. nice to do that. Like, yeah. I like both worlds. Yeah. So it's very interesting. I think we all did. I packed at like 1030 the night before. I'm like, I got my clothes. I got my cameras. We saw how you fucking packed. You threw a bucket yeah. into the back of the truck. This big ass bucket. Yeah. It was all my clothes and all my hunting stuff and cameras in one bucket. So, so all me concise. and Jake and Mason know, fuck, this is going to be tight quarters with four of us. Yep. We were nice and compact and Little tight. duffel bag. Yep. Little mini duffel bag. Yep. Yep. And Here comes fucking... Luke with his Pelican case of fucking camera gear. In the, and if you guys have seen the black and yellow buckets at Costco, this is the bucket we're talking about. It's no small tater. Hey, don't forget that pillow I got, that purple pillow. Ooh. Yeah, then you bring the rock hard fucking pillow from hell. No, it's not rock hard. You yeah. had shit in the back seat, the front seat, the bed of the truck. Hey, fortune favors the prepared, buddy. Uh -huh. I thought it was the bold. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so, then we, so we had a, a nice cooked dinner, had good yep. conversation all night, woke up the next morning, went and looked for some elk. Uh, definitely saw elk, a lot of bulls, not a lot of cows. Uh, went out on an evening. We hiked in for the evening hunt, same situation. Yep. Didn't see anything that night. Nate. One bull. Oh, yes, yes. I didn't see it, but they... Mm -hmm. The Nate spotted some yeah. group of cows. Yeah, but they're having weird weather there right now, so it's not really uh, predictable behavior for the for the elk at the moment. Yeah, and the funny thing in retrospect on that is usually when you show up, I didn't know this, but Cliff, Cliff's very informative on a lot of topics. Uh -huh. He's one of their guys. He's an awesome guy. Yeah. He said they make they usually make people zero to, to see if they can shoot. Oh, beforehand. Before, and they didn't make us do that. Yeah, that wasn't didn't even come up. And we're talking, you know, we okay, we're shoot to hunt, we're rock slide, we're on no mission. We talk a lot of shit, right? Uh, uh. And we we're saying we could do this and we could do that, and unbeknownst to us, they're like, sure, you know, it, it, amongst themselves, and Cameron can get on and defend himself, but we kind of heard after the fact that they were like, oh yeah, motherfuckers always come on here and say they can do this <laughs> and they can do that, and then they shoot thirteen times and never hit anything. So that's prefacing the neck going into the next day. Yes. Yeah. Well, you so. tell the next day. So the next day, 
Uh, if we wake up bright and early, which I hate and Forum hates, and you were even kind of, you wouldn't love in the mornings. It was, well, it was nice. It was nice, but I, I fucking hate mornings. Yeah. But if we're going to shoot things, I'm all in. So yeah. you never were waiting on me. We're waiting on fucking Luke. Mm-hmm. And, Actually, uh, we were. So then Luke, we the, and what? we'll go back a little bit. The night before, all of our shit's in Cliff's truck. And we get out, and we all, me and Forum, grab all of our shit and take it out. Well, about, I don't know, the next morning, we figure out that Luke left his rifle. <laughs> Luke looks around the whole lodge. He's like, huh. Where's Cliff at? Where's Cliff? Oh, oh yeah, he's not coming today. Cliff, Cliff's, Cliff's running a little late here, man. And Cliff's, his rifle's <laughs> yeah. in Cliff's truck, so oh, he didn't get a rifle. You shouldn't even day, go yeah. a step earlier than that. It wasn't his rifle. <laughs> no, it, it goes, and, and he back. had got it the morning before he didn't take it. Yeah, yeah. So he did take it Poor that fella. afternoon the first day. Yeah. So anyways, we're going into this hunt down a rifle. There's four shooters. There's I'm a shooter, Mason's a shooter, Luke's a shooter, and Form's a shooter. Yep. And we have three <clears> rifles. <throat> Yes. Because he left his rifle in Cliff's truck. Who's, Again. Who Cliff's at his house at five in the morning. Mm-hmm. So we didn't stop by and wake up Cliff again. We headed out. And I will say, Cameron said an hour. So an hour 40 into this drive, I'm like, where the fuck are we going? It's starting to get light. Well, it's a fucking blizzard, dude. Yeah. So we, it's, it yeah. gives you the percent. Time is not really yep. working correctly with your driving and driving. Form has it's kind of slick. Form has street tires on his rented fucking Toyota. Yeah. We about fucking ate that river <laughs> one to that. I don't think it was a river. It looked like a river canyon. Yeah. Slid uh, twice. We almost slid off the road. And uh, anyways, we got, we're driving up and I glanced to my left and there is literally like a hundred elk. Yeah. It, this is like an hour 40 in. And I'm like, why don't we just fucking shoot those elk? And I, yeah. we didn't know for sure if we were on the property or not. Yeah. Oh, we're in the car in front of you. We're like, don't stop. Don't stop. I came and yelling at me not to stop because he didn't want to spook him at all. But yeah, those were shooters. That was yeah. shooting territory. So. Open, we go about another mile down the road and we pull into Courtney's house and we didn't know where we were, but we're, those those elk were on the menu after that. Yes. So you you go through your part because you guys took off. You guys were driving in the front truck. I don't know the conversation was going down in there. Yes, yeah, so we started to drive back towards them, see what they're, you know, how they were behaving. And they were getting skittish because we stopped both the trucks. Uh, luckily, we were next to kind of a fenced in area with a bunch of hay bales. But they were skittish. It seemed like they were kind of scattering. They were running away from us. And, you know, Cameron and, and Courtney were kind of of the opinion that once we tried to get on them, you know, they were probably going to run away. So I said, why don't you guys just sit here and let us put a stock on them? So we all got in this line. So I guess there's there's six of us. Yep. And five, five of us. We're walking by, and we're in like five. a little burrow ditch along the side of the road. Yeah. And uh, we're walking by, and one of them tells Forum, Courtney tells Forum, hey, pick out an elk. Don't flock shoot them. <laughs> and uh, Forum tells him, that's not going to be a problem. Yes. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take it from here. Yeah, we'll that take it from thing, here. Right? That's not going to be a problem. So we all get this line. We're all holding rifles, and, and, and Luke actually got out of line for a second trying to film us, and 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 Forum was like, get the fuck back in line. So we're all hustling down and we crawl under this barbed wire into this fence and you guys are all laid out. I wasn't shooting, so I'm kind of trying to sit back a little bit. And yeah, the, the elk were still, they kind of settled down a little bit. They were about 750. Yep, they're seven. They're about 800, 780, somewhere in there. <clears throat> and the funny part is, was in, you got to be off the road in Montana, so we had mm. to go through the fence. You mm. know, we had to go, you know, get up into the actual farming ground, the cultivated mm. field. <clears throat> As soon as I saw the elk there, once we got under through the fence, I was like, "Oh, these fuckers are in trouble." Yes, because <laughs> they, I thought they were gonna bolt. Yeah. yeah, and they didn't. They didn't. They were kind of milling around. We didn't know there was a couple coyotes out there fucking with them too. I think. Yeah, yeah. And uh, once I saw, we all four set up. I was like, "Oh fuck, oh, about to go down." They're in trouble. But there was other problems from me and your son. But we'll get into that in a sec. Yeah. So that little little did we know that that. That back behind us, you got Cameron and Courtney back there basically taking bets on how many elk are going to die or not yeah, going to die. Courtney told Cameron, I'll kiss your ass if they kill one <laughs> fucking elk. If they kill one elk, I'll kiss your ass. Yep. Which they've seen a lot of they've seen a lot of shit shows. Mm-hmm. And like I said, we kind of talked a mean game beforehand. And, and in my opinion, it still was a shit show, but it was impressive to them. Yeah, that was the cleanest they said they've seen. Well, I don't think even any of them have seen four elk get shot out of one herd at one mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. cleanly. No. Yeah. And uh, go ahead. So yeah, so we get uh, we're all laying out there and kind of uh, form is in charge. Form ever is directing all the shooters on which elk they're going to be uh, shooting. Mm-hmm. So there's three shooters lined up next to each other. It's form on the right, and then Ryan, and then Mason's on the left. Uh, we had Luke 
camera guy. And I'm just sitting back trying to help Mason figure out which elk to shoot. Getting and he did this whole thing. Everything. You know, he has this uh, five, four, three, two, and they shoot on two. So he's a, I'm in control. I'm in control. I like to try to be, you know, have the, yep. have the form voice go, I'm yep. in control. And they go five, four, three, and then they fire on two. And we hear one rifle go off. Yep. Like, uh oh. So form dropped his. Yep. Ryan failed to chamber. So and Mason it, had a misfire. In my, my, <clears throat> I have no defense. I <laughs> I shoot all the fucking time. You never, you actually never talked about this after. Listen, so, so what happened? What happened was is this is okay. Inform preaches this, and Luke can attest because he's been to the class. We fuck up all the time. We never fucking say we do. I shoot. I would say I shoot more than ninety nine percent of hunters, mm-hmm. and I have a system. And for some reason. What I did was I never shoot off my backpack, and this is what I'm thinking happened. I'm not making an excuse. I fucked it up. I mm-hmm. didn't load the gun, which is an idiot. But there's also a good part of this is I never shoot off my backpack in a bipod. Okay. And when we laid down, I thought we'd have a little more time. This is all on me. It's a total fuck up on my part. When I laid down and I had the bipod in the backpack, usually my, my process is if I'm shooting off the backpack, I put on the backpack and I load. Well- if I'm shooting off a bipod, I throw the bag out, and I'll shoot off and take a mullinator. And as soon as I hit that in my process, I load, put it on safe. Well, since I didn't do that, and this is just me, I got to work on this. Since I had the backpack as my rear bag and the fucking double pull MDT as my front, in my mind, that's the only thing I can think of. It didn't trigger me uh. that fucking, you know, that what I do every time. As soon as I, I know I'm shooting off a backpack, boom, I lay it down, I load, and I put it on safe. If I put it on there, as soon as it hits the back of that bag, I know I put it. I didn't. That mm-hmm. wasn't in my mind. Mm-hmm. For for habits to be formed, you have to have a cue, a routine, yes, and a, a response. Cue. That's the word I was looking for. Look, you a cue. You don't. You didn't have your. I cue. didn't have my cue. So, what happened was we did the I am in control. His forms whole things. You shoot on the T of two, and I only one bang went off, and we're suppressed. <laughs> and uh, I fucking took over. My habits took over. I just no didn't even re rack. Didn't fuss, racked. That time they were running, just they just started kind of getting all stirred up, going to the right. Yeah, that's right now. They're moving to the left. Yep. Well, and that's what, after Mason took his. So that's after his because they were moving to the right when okay. I shot, and I just picked one. It was funny too because I was nice, calm. I pulled. I was like, "Oh, there's a calf. I don't want to shoot a little elk." I moved it to where there's a bull. I was like, oh, "I can't shoot a bull," and I moved it to the next cow. And I was like, she has a little beer belly on her. Yeah. I thought, so I'm going to shoot the one with the beer belly. Yeah. Boom. And one the, shot. The greatest thing about a sick fucking um preach it or not and you can we'll put up a picture of my exit wound is you can spot your hit i saw my hit that's the greatest thing about this gun dude i saw it go wow. right behind the shoulder yeah. so i knew instantly i didn't have to like the hardest part and form is right shooting bulls or by themselves generally is easy shooting into a herd of cows is hard yeah. once you start shooting because oh, you don't want to start injuring a nope. bunch of other animals you've got to know the animal and they get herded back up so the cool thing about spotting your own hot shots is Boom, I saw that shot. It looked to me, she was quartered away farther, so I hit her a little farther back. But to me, it looked like it was three or four inches behind the shoulder. It was a good shot. Middle, yep. I said, it's over. So I didn't have to really worry. She was dead. So then I just kind of stood back and yep. Mason had a, you can tell about Mason. Well, she did. Well, your elk did, uh, your elk dropped yeah, she and then kinda, got up. And then, oh yeah, sorry. She dropped, she hit the ground, she yep. got up, she walked 10 yards and fell over. Without any, it was a single shot. Yep, single and, shot. And yeah, when he throws a pitch, it was the most bloodshot damage I've seen on one side under the hide. Keep going down. It was it was spread half of the body. Yeah. Was bloodshot top to bottom, down. back to front, underneath the hide. The was crate it, it's like I said, she was pretty hard angled <clears throat> away. And in my mind I didn't see that quite as much. So when I shot, mm. I hit her about second to last rib. Mm. It, this goes back to seven hundred and eighty two yards. Six millimeters they claim don't penetrate and you need a hunting bullet to be hard. It had to go from the distance had to be thirty inches. Yeah. And exited. So yep. it went 30 inches of liver. I, I think I don't know if I hit the liver, but let's just say it hit the fuck. It, t- it took a rib out, took all the lungs out, yep. exited out right behind the shoulder, breaking another rib and left the elk. Yeah. Went through two ribs. Through two the ribs. The first rib, the, the, I don't even know what we're going to call this, the temporary wound, whatever, the bloodshot that expanded underneath the high, it was, it was three feet by two feet yep. of an area that was solid bloodshot. Yep. I wouldn't want any more. That's enough. Yeah. Yeah. So it the six millimeter, the one fifteen D tech, it was about twenty two hundred feet per second impact velocity, one thousand percent did his job. Oh yeah. And more than enough. <clears throat> so it yeah, it hit the as soon as I hit it, it it, it didn't drop instantly, but it, I hit it, it fell down, got up, and I kinda lost sight and then I saw it walk over and fall down again. Fall down again, yeah. 
And then Mason got on his. Yeah, so we're trying to get Mason on one. Uh, so we're all, at this point, you know, I'm always yelling. Whenever Mason's involved, I'm fucking yelling at him for well, your dad. Yeah, your job. yeah. Get that. There's one right there, Broadside. Shoot it. Shoot it. Shoot it. Shoot it. Why aren't you shooting it? No, shoot it. Oh, and in this time, the second I shot, they all turned right towards us. Yeah. They started running towards us. So at this point, his dope keeps changing. So they were at 750, and by the time they start coming towards us, it was 650, and then 550, and then 450. So we're trying to get one separate. Because they're moving, you want one separated broadside standing there without anything behind it. And finally, he got a one, and you know I don't really know all the de- he sh- He fired. I don't know what happened on the first one. First one he missed high, I believe. Yeah, miss yeah. high, and that was because the dial was wrong. Yes, that was my fault. As he's, you know, he keeps they keep coming towards us, and oh, he's about to play it here. Suppressors, whatever it is with suppressors, mm-hmm. they seem to always run towards you. Yeah, yeah. So he finally, uh, yeah. There's the there's his. So that's his. Go back a little bit. Go back just a hair. That was another shot. I think that was over the back. Okay, so this is right. Yeah, that's good. So he goes high right here. Which one's he shooting at? Uh, far left, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, he, oh no, that was a hit. Yeah, he hits yep. it. It's a, that uh, was a high back hit. You can see the blood right there. Yep. Oh, that's when I remember saying on the video, oh, it was a good hit. I'm trying to follow that one. You did a good job here, Luke. She's still there on the front on the left. He sends another one. That one was high, I think, the, the second one. Yeah. Anyways, Mason takes a couple shots this, and because like, of this is a perfect thing I'm saying about when they get back in together. Oh yeah. So you know she's in the middle there. She's yep. one of the ones that's not moving because yep. she's hit. There she that's is. Her. They all start leaving. So you tell which one you hit, right? And now she's clear. Yep. Spit he sends another light. one. Hi. Right over the top. Again, because they had ran further towards us. That's where form says aim for the belly. Yeah, right behind the shoulder there. And then right when she turns back. He hits it right. This is the first there. time. Oh, yeah, yeah, and that was another good shot. There's the Yodi in the back. Another There's a the coyote running away, yeah. She's in trouble now. So so that was great. So so Mason takes care of his. Yep. And Maybe. then because we only had three rifles, we're basically telling Luke to get behind a rifle. I think he got behind uh, Form's rifle. She's that liver shot, dude. They do not like that. And she it's taking her a while, though, huh? He had to reload, I think. Yep. He. Yeah, there you go. He hit her again. Oh, jeez. That last one was a good one. Then that's a six five. So. Yeah, it's a one fifty six burger, three thousand feet per second. And I think at that point, once once they get riled up and they're running around, they're going to have a little more adrenaline pumping, and mm-hmm. you know it takes a little bit. But and then now this, but this is where Luke forgot his gun, so he picks up Forum Six UM. Yeah, and then what happened with the camera work from here? Then uh, I think you just Mason, put the camera down. Mason hopped on. So well, Mason hopped on. Yeah, Mason hopped on. I got down. My biggest. Mistake was I took a deep breath trying to control my breath. A deep I, breath really doesn't describe it. It was more like a ninety second breath. Mm-hmm. No, I just blew into the scope, dude. If you, I blew. Into I wonder the scope. if we could hear your breath on the video. It was this monster <sighs> breath, and I just fogged up the whole scope. And then, like right now, there's an elk just standing there. We're like, Luke, Luke, uh, shoot the elk, Luke. There's there's one right there, Luke. Shoot it. Oh, every person was yelling. Yeah, not me. No, <laughs> I thought there's enough chiefs. <laughs> Mason's like he's, she's the one walking. She's the one walking. I'm like yeah, there's every, everything's walking right now. Yeah, this is where it's very hard. So what happens then, Luke? This is your shot. Yeah. So the first first one missed as it's walking right there, right behind. Oh, is it, was that he the said, dust there? Yeah, that okay. was the dust. Okay, and then it starts walking up. They all start crossing the road, and at that point, that's when I make my second shot and. It was elevation was good. It just hit back. So it was more of a stomach shot. So you'll see they start going up on over the hill. And uh then I take a I take a stomach shot. You'll see it when she's soloed out. So it's that that back one, right? Three, two, one, stomach shot. Yep. Oh yeah, it was back. She didn't even flinch. No. Mm-hmm. No. She, she, yeah, there's no reaction. You saw the impact? Yeah. Yeah, and this is where you got to wait and see her fan out and see her filter out. Yeah, so she basically sits down on the other side, on our side of the road, but down in a little drainage. And then, so we got, we have three elk down, one wounded. We get in the pickup, drive over. That's her there. She knows she's hit. She ain't trying to jump the fence. Yeah. She knows something wrong. And then she uh, she drops down in the drainage somewhere. 
Well, that must not be her at the back, huh? It could be. Anyways, this is getting boring for the listener. So we end up uh, leaving her. She's behind this little this little knob that we can't see. So we get in the truck. We go drive up there, and Luke's got the the rifle shouldered, and we're we're coming down, and then immediately we see her. She's standing up, and takes off running. Right. Yeah. So she runs to the right where where uh, Ryan and Mason are going to the field to to check out their other elk, and I am shouldering the rifle about to take a shot and notice that the line of sight is right at Mason and, and, and Ryan. So I, I uh, index my finger and, and don't shoot. And she swings back up to the right, hops over the, the street fence and goes up the hill. And she's about, you know, she's going to go up the hill at that point. So I run my ass up the hill and uh, get to the peak of it, catch her quartering away, and then uh, just put a clean lung shot shouldering 100 yards 150 yards away on the move yep she dropped with the uh the rock stock super easy to get in uh shouldering position and yeah she dropped and there she is there i uh i did put two i put two i put two other shots that wasn't the end of it yeah so she drops (laughs) but she was she dropped but she wasn't done she wasn't done her heads up yeah so you know 30 seconds later we're like yeah nice and we're looking the field for the other elk and uh I look at my elk and I'm like, I see her head popping up. I was like, oh, she's not done yet. So Forms like, hey, put one in her neck. And so I go over there and grab a fence post. And at that point, my entire my my adrenaline dump dropped. I'm like, okay, she's down. And then it goes back up again. Like I gotta kill this thing. And I put two misses, you know, 50 yards away. You know, that stuff you just can't you just can't have an excuse for. But the second one, we didn't see an impact. It might have might have hit her neck, but she moaned pretty heavily after the second shot. Yeah, either she was just she was taking her last breath at that point, or you did hit her one or the other. Yeah, so two more. Well, the way you dropped her, you definitely hit the shoulder. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that 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 off shoulder shot was good. Yeah, yeah, we got four elk down, and then Courtney and them came over, or you went to the truck. Well, yeah, I started, I started walking back because they were this whole thing. They were about two hundred yards behind us, but they could witness the entire thing happening, and they had Beano's <laughs> back there, so they were watching. And I said, well, guys, I think we got uh, four elk down. <laughs> yep. It's pretty exciting. Dude. And and people will listen to this. You know, there was two, really two elk clean kill, clean, ki- killed cleanly. But the other two were dead with, they were, everything was dead within five minutes. Yeah. But mm-hmm. the thing that. With pe- no wounded. No wounded. Everything a bullet touched, we found it. We made sure we didn't shoot into the herd. Mm. We made sure it was the elk. You know, we have video evidence. We, we have video evidence of each elk getting shot. The thing that people will, they'll, they'll peanut gallery this, you know, or the Monday quarterback it is, we're telling you the truth. Oh, yeah. A lot of people forget the truth. Yeah. And they, I've seen so many shit shows. With Not only that, stuff. but we always try to get everything on video because yep. you do forget some, some you steps. Do. And the thing is, is, I shoot more than 99% of hunters. I, that's not a boast. That's fucking true. I fucking didn't load my gun. Shit happens. It would have been incredible to see. If everything would have went according to yep. plan, oh, yeah. it would have been five, four, three, two, and three elk would have literally dropped yep. right at that yep. point. But that's not hunting. Like people, no. these are, I would, I would say that the four of us, especially on form, we've shot more than most hunters. I would say more than 80% of hunters out there. Just off Luke going to the school puts him, in my opinion, more qualified than most hunters out there, mm. general hunters. Mm. So the thing is, shit happens, and we do. You have to shoot a lot. You I saw that training take over when he was that on-the-run off-shoulder shot. Yes. Yeah. Other yep. than other than lazing people, you know, it was still pretty good. Forum said he would have taken the shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Well, he was so they were so far out. Like yeah. it yeah. wasn't so, it wasn't line of sight. It yeah, was the just elk like, like ran behind you. Yeah. Towards us. We were looking all the wrong direction because yeah. we're expecting her to be wounded, but she was still quick. She yeah. went around. Yeah. Yeah, Anyways, know. shit shows happen. What the training does is it makes you just don't want to lose your shit. Mm. Get you know the other end of buck fever where mm. you're frustrated because I've seen that happen, and then do the wrong stuff. And yeah, target acquisition was I was dialed with that re racking the bolt, getting that going like that stuff I wasn't dialed before. But as far as putting a good shot on, I could have done a little better on that. Yeah, and Mason had a little bit of frustration when you clicked and go off. But he got over it real quick, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he didn't lose his shit to where yep. I've seen people, they cannot function because it didn't go right. the right way. 
We and, saw none of that happen. And he had a monster shift to the left too. I mean, he had yep. to sweep over thirty degrees, you know, yes. just to to continue shooting, and he did for, well. Yep. For me, and if I was looking at it, I would say Luke needs to shoot more, just to, so he, he's more confident getting on target. Uh, you need range finding binoculars. Oh yeah. Jake needs range finding. We binoculars. already knew that though. That's what yeah, they're, they're, they're on order. Yeah. yeah. I think that would have cut down on almost all that bullshit. Mm-hmm. And I need to fucking practice loading the fucking rifle on my cues <laughs> and. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't even bitch it for him because his know. went perfectly fine. Yeah, he did have two. I tell you what, if it, when yeah. we're shooting night force ELR, you better not be pulling that no load shit. Well, that doesn't really matter. Now. <laughs> it's like not so damn important. <laughs> to where this was, you're literally shooting on a line. It all, boom! If that, I almost uh, know, and it's hard to say in retrospect. If it had went down, we'd had three dead elk right then. Mm-hmm. But seeing all that go down, and you take Cameron and Courtney, who've seen a lot. I mean, Cameron fucking been guiding for 20 fucking years. Yeah. He said that was really clean. And we're like, man, to us, that yeah. was a that was a disaster. We, we could have done much better. Yes. Yeah. So anyways, we I don't know how far we want to go into it, but we we went and got all of our elk, cut it up, took the pictures. Oh, yeah. The famous form fucking. Courtney pulls out this badass truck with a fucking dump. Is a, It was more than a dump bed. It was this. Well, you guys might see pictures of all the There's elk. There's a picture of it up there. Uh, right? Piled up in the bed of it. But it's this big dump truck box that, mm-hmm. that hydraulics back off the truck to the ground with a tailgate on it. You just drag the elk in and lift it back onto the truck. So we went and gutted all the four elk and piled them all in there. And then he was nice enough uh, about an hour later to drive them out to Cameron's place. And we got to hang them up on winches and in the T-bars and, yes. and, you know, skin them and quarter them up while they're hanging in the barn. It was pretty awesome. Been hunting for 30 years. That's only the second time I've got elk out whole. Really? Yeah. Like yeah. that. It was uh, it was quite the experience, and of course they're set up for it because they're, you know, they're selling hunts on their property and all that good stuff. If you uh, if you wanted to hunt that same ranch where we were, that's called the Three Crosses Ranch. It's where I'll be. We'll be holding our shoot hunt university. Yeah, you have to go through Absorki. Yep, uh, Absaroka. You have to go through. Is it Absorki or Absaroka? I say Absaroka because that's how it's fucking pronounced. Yeah, I say. Absaroka. I think it's Absorki Wilderness. <laughs> Beartooth Wilderness. I did hear Cliff say something different so, than what I was saying. No wilderness in there. So you have to Absaroka go. Beartooth Outfitters. So Absorki Beartooth Wilderness Outfitters. You have to go through Cameron to hunt that ranch. So you have yep. to go through Cameron to it's, get to that It's ranch. A-B. Hey, do we have to go back to the Kurt Roscoe fucking oh, thing? Oh, shit. Hey, pull up their website up there. When I was filming Cliff doing the butchering, he didn't say Absaroka. Absorki. He, he said, I think that. That's how it's pronounced. All right, it's Absorki. I'm still calling it Absaroka. Really. Anyways, you have to go through Cameron to get to, on those hunts. Yes, you just have to specify the uh, yep. the Three Crosses Ranch, and that's the one that used to be, as of a couple years ago, it was a draw tag only, and now it just became over the counter. And I know they have their own tags and all that good shit they can help you with, but I, I think we need to have a speak pipe from somebody that lives over in the town of Absorki, mm-hmm. and to call us and tell yeah. us the correct. Pronunciation. <laughs> <clears throat> we should have asked them that on. Uh, oh, there you go. They're all their elk loader up. Yep. It was quite the experience, and I mean, I think that the shoulder season cow hunt is, you know, it's kind of in between October elk hunting and and spring bear. It was kind of a nice little middle ground there. It was a lot of fun. It's a fo- I don't want to say it's. I guess we shouldn't say affordable. I mean, it's he's charging fifteen hundred bucks. Is that what it was? I think two two thousand two thousand bucks for three days. I think if there's two of you, it's fifteen hundred a piece. If you go two, that's what one. it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's people always say hunting money. If it's your thing, it's your thing. If it's not, you're not. There's mm-hmm. really you shouldn't bitch about it either way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To 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 us, it was a good thing to get out of cabin fever and go shoot oh, some yeah. elk. Oh yeah. That we need, and and then Luke stole half of our elk. So. Shit. <laughs> yeah, Cliff was. Uh, we actually we had the awesome opportunity to do some deboning videos on some front and rear quarters. So Luke's gonna get those all edited up and put up on the shoot hunt uh, YouTube. But Cliff was rather an expert on the parts of the quarters and how they come off uh, pulling the bone out clean and really did a fantastic job. He, he, you know, 10 years experience and he's got a certification for butchers. I'm not sure what's called, but yeah, he's certified. So oh he's, yeah. He was calling all, you know, the loin and the tip and the, all this shit. Despite the his $5, his $5 Walmart knife. Yeah. Hey, that, that fucking <laughs> knife stayed sharp that whole time though. Yeah. Uh, he was whacking and stacking when he was out there. Yeah. Shout out Cliff, man. You, you crushed it, dude. <clears throat> So, yeah, we are, go- I think Jake kind of touched on it. We are going, we found the perfect, pristine, beautiful mm. location for a shooting school. Worked out a deal with them. So, those coming to the Shoot to Hunt University, the 0 to 600, you're in for a treat. Mm. We sold out the 2024 class 
the first 2025 class sold out, and uh, we did get some more messages from guys, but we're going to open a second 0 to 600 for 2025. Uh, that'll happen probably next week. Yep. And you guys can jump on there and uh, get signed up. But there's lodging and kitchens and all this fancy shit. Beautiful, beautiful ranch. Yep. And uh, really going to set the tone for that for that school. Oh, I couldn't have came together any better. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what else? What are we missing? We've well, got the Western Hunt Expo coming up too. But Yeah, if yep. you guys are headed to Western Hunt, when are we going to post this podcast? We have to post it on Tuesday. You're going to have to do it. Next okay. week. Yeah. So Stone Glacier, rifle giveaway, mm-hmm. rock stock, Tika, Maven. What do we do? I think we did a seven PRC. Yep, seven PRC plus P. I imagine uh, Maven scope and Maven and Stone Glacier. All those guys are at the at the show, so go check them out. Um, to enter that giveaway, just visit their booth and scan the QR code, and that's going to take you right to the page to to get signed up. Yep. Uh, the XLR unknown munitions giveaway is already live. I believe we have something like forty thousand entries. Um, but get on there, same thing, go on to unknownmunitions.com, go to rifle giveaways. That rifle will be given away at the show on Saturday. You don't have to be present to win. Yep. You can sign up now, or you get some extra kudos and points if you're at the show. Go to the booth, scan the code, and get some extras there. Uh, go talk to Matt Means. He'll be at the booth. Uh, we will have some time in at their booth as well as Stone Glaciers. We don't have exact timing yet, but we'll we'll announce that on the Instagram when we're yeah. there you don't have to go to the show to win the gun but you freaking will get bonus points for mm. being there and scanning the qr <clears throat> code for both the xlr and the stone glacier one yes so and we'll also have a rock stock at the maven booth yep if everything goes according to plan and what else and we'll be walking around the whole time so if you guys happen to be going to hunt expo you want to chat you want to talk shoot to hunt whatever we'll uh we'll be around in force i think there'll be four or five of us yep we are scaling our mar- marketing operation as well. I'll be out there passing out booklets. So if you guys have a business in the shooting or hunting industry and are looking to scale your marketing efforts, whether that be Instagram, websites, event coverage, all that good stuff, we are uh, we are open to doing that and working with you. So you can email us at marketing at shoot to hunt, uh, podcast at shoot to hunt, all that good stuff, but I'll be there. Uh, walking around and pamphlets. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, so this stock on the table is actually going to turn into the Stone Glacier rifle. That's a rock stock just showed up today. And we did a, yeah, yeah, 7 PRC plus P. I think it's got ratchet fluting on the, on the steel barrel. that have a fancy paint job, Stone Glacier logo, uh, Maven Ooh, scope, all that good stuff. Sexy. Yeah, it would be nice. She shoulders pretty nicely. Yeah. Yep. It'll be ready to go. And what about this other rifle on the table? We got another rifle on the table here. Uh, it's for a, a fantastic customer of ours. We'll just call him Frank. No last name there. Uh, XLR chassis again. Magnesium 4.0. This is a 7 PRC plus P on a Vesper with a carbon six Magnum contour barrel. He always likes to run suppress, so it's got a suppress adapter up there. Uh, Night Force NX8 UM Premier rings. Trigger Tech Pro trigger with a flat shoe on it. All the all the accessories on the chassis there, and of course, Cerakoted in house. We got kind of a a multi cam light pattern uh, with a heavy silver topo over the top of it. He's a grayscale guy, and uh, we tried to do something a little different for him, and came out badass, of course, and shoots amazing. Yeah, those topo lines, yeah, look really good. Calling that territory, I think. Territory. Territory. I do like that black and gray. <clears throat> um, yeah, he likes his grayscale. We also are filling up quick on the haha, and it's, it's three months out, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want a spot, you need to go and sign up. We got outdoorsmen's coming now, as well as uh, mm-hmm. you told me somebody else, uh, Revic. Oh, Revic. Revic's coming with the binoculars, rangefinders. They have a rifle scope they just came out with. So. All of their optic brand, they want a booth, or they tell me they're coming. Yeah, and what uh, what class is Outdoorsman going to teach? Yeah, they're going to take one of Jake's classes, yeah. and it's going to be shooting off a tripod. Shooting off a tripod, perfect. By Mark Denham. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's coming up quick, so it's I would say it's at least, at least what is it, a quarter plus full? Uh, I yes, I think we're, we're probably closer to half at this point. If we're going to take, we're taking 30 students. Uh, we will have room for a little bit more for walk-ins on the event, you know, during the day. But 
uh, generally limited to 30, and I think we've sold at least 15 full packages. If you guys buy the full 399 package for the both the days of training, we're going to have kind of a uh, meet the vendors, meet the crew, dinner, evening video kind of situation for Friday night. Okay. And there'll be some more details for that coming up soon. And uh, we have a speak pipe. Oh, speak pipe. There's a couple. Hey, guys. Just want to say thanks for the podcast and all the great info. Uh, my question today is I want to build a 6.5, and I'm coming from the big 30 cal world like a lot of people are now. So I've narrowed my choices down to uh, 6.5 PRC or 6.5 SOM. Um, so just wanted to get your guys' takes, pros and cons on each one. Um, I do hand load if that makes a difference. So um, thanks, guys, for all the info, and talk to you later. I think it's the second time we heard that exact question. Yeah, you guys listened to it picked, on here. We picked, he picked the wrong two dudes because I already know your answer, but go ahead. <laughs> well, so hand loading, pretty much, you know, unlimited possibilities at that point. Uh, they're both, I mean, they're fairly equal. The SOM has slightly more case capacity. I think it's 4%. It could be 4%. Um, you know, the rifle that we were shooting elk with uh, this trip that we've been describing uh, was a 6.5 SOM Improved Plus P which gets you up around 15 to 20% more horsepower than just a straight PRC. If you're going to already load it yourself, you got to choose whether you want to go wildcat or not. I would go all the way if you're a loader, you know, just to get that extra boost. But uh, either one of them are going to be great. They are. 6.5 PRC is a fantastic rifle. Yeah. But if you say hand load, and I don't have <clears> – Unknown <throat> does all my hand loading now, but – the 6.5 Psalm or the 6.5 UM or whatever we're calling the 6.5 improved. Psalm improved, Psalm improved. Yeah. It's To me, it's always giving you a little more, a little more in the wind, a little more to reach out there. It just like if you listen to the podcast, you've heard what Jim Carr and his kids did with his 6.5 Psalm. Mm. Those are all loaded from Jake. I developed the load, and they just hammer with the oh, 147. Yeah. So I'm all, always going to go on the bigger side. If you have a, th a thought where you may say, oh, I'm lazy and I don't want to reload this year, or I just want to go grab that box of Hornaday match ammo for a 6.5 PRC, if that's in the possibilities, that would be the only reason I would use a 6.5 PRC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great brass from each of them. In fact, ADG's running 6.5 SOM right now. Uh, I would say that obviously 6.5 PRC has more brass availability from the manufacturers than SOM does. Really, the 6.5 SOM is only coming from ADG. Uh, that being said, any of those cartridges, once you secure yourself a couple hundred pieces of brass, it doesn't matter from that point. That will finish out the life of the rifle. Um, That's an interesting topic, and you probably know better than most. Is I keep hearing, oh, I don't want to go with a 6.5 SOM because we're not going to have brass in a few years. Do you see a point in the next two to three years where somebody won't produce it? ADG is definitely not going to stop. Especially because they know that that's one of their bread and butters. You know, it's one of their, and they're always running seven psalm. Everything is about family and parent cartridges when the when the brass manufacturer is going to run stuff. They're never going to give up seven psalm, and six five psalm is already there next to it. It's definitely not the six five psalm is kind of the the black sheep of that family, but they're right. still going to do it. In fact, as you guys know from the last podcast, ADG is going to be head stamping six um brass for us. So I don't see that going anywhere anytime soon. Especially if we're requesting a couple days of production, they're going to do it just for us. So. Yeah. Yes, and that's to me when I would always, before I got hooked up with Jake, before he started Unknown, is I would always find the brass before I made the gun. Oh, yeah. Like, that's the only thing. This, if you're going to hand load and it's kind of an outlier, or you think it's an outlier, find the 100 pieces, 200 or pieces like of during, brass. Or like during the COVID shit, man, everything seemed to be an outlier back then. Like, don't even start building a rifle until you had your brass in your hand. So to me, it's like not a real conversation. I'm always going to go for the little more performance. Yes. So 6.5 uh, saw so improved. Yeah. Is, is, is the way. It's what, two elk and three deer down now with yours? Yep, yep, doing good. One thing I found fascinating, you're explaining to either Courtney or Cameron the difference between hand loading and the amount of kernels you can be off versus mm. the factory, mm. how many kernels of gunpowder. I thought that was fascinating. Yeah, that's generally one of the downsides of factory ammo would be the extreme spread. Uh, that's why we always, you know, we're using FX120i scales and loading ourselves just to keep that, that ESSD down a little bit lower. It's not that you can't get really fantastic factory ammo, and if you're not reaching you know, outside of 500 yards, that's not extremely important. And then you'll have guys like Blaine, who's a 1,000-yard bench rest competitor, tell you that he'll have an ES of 50, but he's still shooting you know, four-inch groups at 1,000. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes it does. Yeah. But you want to try to eliminate those variables as much as possible. Yeah, every 100 yards you go, you, gotta, you want to eliminate more and more and more variables. Mm. 
All right, what's next? One more. We have two more. Let's do one more. Jake Ryan, Basil again. <laughs> Got a question in and around the Night Force ELR Steel Challenge. So my questions are, is if you guys can address, can the Night Force ELR Challenge be shot successfully, i.e. not finish last, with a half-assed shooter that can mediocrely call wind, shoot it with a normal hunting rifle. So I'll use Ryan for an example. Could he shoot and be successful <laughs> with the 6UM and a sub 10 pound rifle? I know the squirt guns are 20 plus pound rifles. So can it be shot with the a hunting weight rifle? Question two is, is there a list of gear for must-haves? I don't remember those from last year's ELR podcast. Is there a list of gear that is a must-have for the Night Force ELR challenge? That's all I got. Thanks. Yeah, take the first one. I wouldn't shoot a 6UM just because you're going to be burning down a lot of barrel and you're going to start eating some metal, and I wouldn't want to have to chase that around. But the, but they have the there is the hunter class yes. sub 16 pounds. Yeah, and if you're talking like a 6.5 PRC, won it. Yep. So you could definitely use a hunting rifle in the hunting thing. And oh, yeah. You damn sure. if you, you don't, I don't even think you have to be a half-ass good shooter. It'd just be a competent shooter, mm -hmm. and you could place. You won't place last. I like yep. how you used to use the reference for the half-ass shooter. I, <laughs> but was it the half-ass or the 6UM? Or the mediocre wind Basil, caller. now you got to tell us. Now I'm a half-ass shooter. Oh, Basil's got to <laughs> tell us. Anyway. Yeah, but so, so, so light, you're already in the right class sub-16 pound. At that point, I would say... You know, you don't want a fucking 6BR. No. You want the furthest uh, reach before you hit the transonic range. Otherwise, you're going to start tumbling. You ain't going to hit shit outside your transonic range unless you're really good. Mm -hmm. um, so when you get to those 2,300-yard targets, that just simply wouldn't get the job done. The 6UM wouldn't get the job done. No. You're going to be transonic before you hit there. So that's why guys are running 300 Normas, or you're just trying to push that transonic range as far as possible. Yeah, so let that sink a 6.5 PRC won it. Mm -hmm. And if you're, it, it seems like everybody that I know, the two people that have won it and talking to the match directors, it 300 Norma is the one they'd all come up with. Yeah. So go down a little bit or go up a little bit. But if you're going 10 pounds, I'd go, you know, if you're going hunting weight, I'd go down. So then what we'll do, so for the second part of the question, what we should do in, in our Night Force ELR series is we'll invite Corson Piper on, mm -hmm. who won this event a couple years back. And go through the equipment list with him. So you can hear yes. from us bullshit shooters. And then you can hear from the dude that won it a couple years ago. He's our sponsored shooter now for Unknown yes. Munitions. It, um, but it is a different game than hunting. Yes. Like it is it is a different. There is some gaming. And you need the right setup for glassing and ranging and win. They have a whole setup. We'll have Corson had a beautiful setup. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We'll bring yeah. him on. Bring him on the phone. And, uh, and he can walk you guys through basically what. Well. Not everybody needs the same type of equipment, and I would say too that as you're you're asking about wind calls and things like that, it kind of depends on how friendly you are because you mm -hmm. could collect a lot of wind information from the guys yeah. in your squad if you you know if you squad up correctly and so on. For example, if you were in our squad, yep, and we saw you as the guy that you know was probably going to take second before last place, we'd be helping you out a lot. Yep, and yeah. if you're a dick, we're a dick. So if you're nice, <laughs> we're nice. It's like there you go. that's the game. But there's also the game of you can watch other people shoot and you can see what the wind is doing. There is that part of it. It's not a blind stage by any means. No matter what in that event, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. We talked a lot about this. Like we could have done better a lot of ways, whether it have been additional practice beforehand, even walking around, looking around a little bit. I mean, there could have been a lot of different things you can do, but you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Uh, squat up correctly. Don't be afraid to ask guys for information, especially if you're behind the, you know, behind the the mid yes. middle of the pack. Um, you're not supposed to be talking out loud, but most guys are helping out. Yeah, you guys sucked. We yeah. did suck, dude. We we <laughs> did shitty, and we by we, we I were, mean Ryan. Oh my god! Uh -huh. <laughs> but we did not well, and we were upper we were upper mid pack of the teams. We were thirteenth. Thirteenth out of what? It was like 30 something teams. Yeah, there was 40 30. something teams. I thought it was like 36 or something. I think it was at least 500 teams and we were 13th. That sounds a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> we were above half. We were in the 
upper half. But I, we're going to say this. Be scared because we're coming in hot this year. Yeah, we're going to throw down some practice. <laughs> My wife tried to say, are you guys going to repaint your rifles? Fuck no. They're going to come back and win it. Only thing we're doing is we're going to triple poles and, and 7 to 35 night forces. That's correct. Is that in honor of Pride Month? What? It's the month. Which Pride Month? June? Why you got to bring the gay into it? <laughs> It was all kosher. It was the main. It was the main subject of talk last year. I did say it, it was a pride rifle. They don't look like pride rifles. Well, they nobody, look like Nerf uh, guns. Nobody knew what to say when I said that. <laughs> oh, they didn't know if I was gay as AIDS or what. Yeah, you make everybody nervous at that point. Yeah, they're just like, <laughs> it's you're fun. gonna be wearing those fishnets there here in yep. a second. We're yeah, so we're still shooting the seven PRCs, one ninety eight tips. Uh, we're about to just fucking dust them off and start practicing. We're still not gonna clean them. <laughs> still not gonna clean them. No, we're gonna leave it as is. They're hey, gonna. Did we not shoot fucking almost twice as good the second day as the first? And we didn't clean shit. Well, so all I did was wipe the bolt. Yeah, we wiped the bolt. I off. pulled the bolts out. I wiped the raceways, wiped the bolt down, put it back in. That was it. Five of the people that we shot with went and cleaned, and they shot worse. Yep, that's right. They told us that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't clean shit. No, just shoot it. Now I would say, you know, if we go out right now and they start, you know, throwing bullets all over the place, we'd probably clean before you replace the barrel. It's not gonna happen. But yeah, it's probably not gonna happen. Yeah, but we will be there. We will be there in force, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Like I said, we're videoing, so if you want to be seen, you know, make sure you run in front of Luke a lot. There you go. <laughs> He'd be the guy that looks like Borat, Yep, He's about be, 20 years younger. He'll have the fishnet stockings on. Hey, we're going to get you a shirt, baby. I'm over here. I'm going to take your picture. <laughs> Smile now. <laughs> <You're looking> for- <laughs> Nice. All right, we got anything else? Scope ring giveaway. Uh, yeah, we're supposed to pick a winner for giveaways. Oh, so you got it. Oh, you got it. Oh, yeah. it. Announce it, it Luke. Guys. You better pick a tough one. Dun, no, dun, so, dun. So, so Rhett gave me one. I said, give me a harder one, man. Mm. This is too easy. Oh, shit. Oh, you screwed somebody out of rings. Yeah. Well, it wasn't even, it, was, it wasn't a good one. This one, this one's Maso Menos. It's uh, Pledger Measures. M-A-S-I-E-R-S. Pledger. Let me see. Can you say that in a sentence? <laughs> Pledger, Maciers, Maciers, M A S I E R S. Yeah, that's it. Pledger. Pledger's already a cool kind of different name. All right, Pledger, uh, you win a set of UM rings of your choice. Get us on email, marketing at shootown.com to claim your prize. Shoot us your address as well. Hey, and let's, oh, yeah. uh, I'm a, apparently I'm the last to know on Tika rings, but tell, oh, me, tell shit. me what we got coming. All right, so we have, uh, we just finished design on. I don't know if I should say yet because it might push some guys off of. All right, we're just gonna say it anyway. Twenty MOA canted Tika rings. The reason we're gonna be able to do this is we're gonna put a small bar between the front and rear. Everything will stay the same. The attachment method, the recoil pins, everything about them will stay the same except for they have to go in an exact recoil pin position. So you have a measuring bar. The bar doesn't stay there. We're still we're trying to we're gonna run the first. We're gonna print three D print the first prototype, and we're gonna see if that's something that. That we're just going to use as a measurement device or leave in place. Mm. It probably weighs less than a tenth of an ounce, right? It's just that thing. So, one way or another, we will have, and we're going to start off with because the 30 mil low is the most popular selling size, the 0.885. 31 inch is the next, mo- next most popular. But because that scope is now going to be pointed down slightly at a 20 MOA angle, mm-hmm. uh, we're probably going to start with the 30 millimeter one inch as kind of the, the prototyping first option. The mediums. Mediums, yes. Okay. And then we already just finished design on one inch scope tube diameter. So now we have 30 millimeter, 34, 35, and down to one inch. Uh, those are all designed up and we'll be going into production soon. I don't know, it's like little tangents of people all getting the same <clears> thought <throat> process, but I'll get one guy that keeps, they'll say, oh, we need one inch scope rings. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden there'll be 15 guys on rock slide saying, we need one inch scope rings. Yeah. So they're ready. Well, I imagine, you know, with the price point of a Tika rifle in general, if you're going to walk into Cabela's, pull a Tika. You're probably not going to pull an NX8 at the same time, right? So you're going to spend two grand on your scope and six hundred on your rifle. So in reality, some most of the lower end scopes have a one inch tube, so it kind of makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah. But coming very oh, and then the bottom metal of mag, of course. Uh, UM DBM and mag again, still looking at three point six in the box. Design is almost done. We're just fi- we're finalizing the way we want to build the magazine. It's not. It's going to most likely have to be a clamshell. What that's going to do for us in, in the UM magazine world is allow for unlimited capacities at that point. Because we machine them off the side, we can have three round, five round, ten round, you know, various options. So it may end up being better. 
Um, and then, of course, we're also going to make a Tika bottom metal that just takes factory Tika mags. Aluminum. Yes. Bigger trigger guard. Yes. How it should be. And we also carry every fucking Tika mag they make just showed up in a box direct from, from Beretta there. So jump online to check those out. And, yeah, we're obviously we're... Tika still sucks, but we're all in for Tika right now. Dude, Tika's fucking <laughs> rock. And you have prefits online. Yeah, prefits are now up on the website. Uh, we're just building a shit ton of, of just Tika rifles in general, uh, even seven PRCs. It's probably one of the most popular choices. I know Tika's coming out with them soon, um, but we're building them now. And we can also order you any Tika you wanted. Everybody keeps asking about pricing, whether it be on Rockside or whatever. They say, oh, can you beat your old optic? Basically, we're going to run map price. Map pricing minimum advertised price that Tika allows just like every other dealer is going to so whatever the price is you're getting from euro optic or wherever else you're looking will match the same price which is map can't go any lower that is set up by beretta uh, we can order you any raffle you want and we will have a bunch of stuff in stock and you have some garments that you can get rid of yeah we got some garment zeros that come in um i should have talked to jess before i come on here there's always stuff she's trying to move God, I'm gonna get a full commission. We literally have a pallet of N565 and a pallet of N570 in singles and kegs. If you guys are local, want to walk in, whatever. But we do hazmat shipping. Um, yeah, that's about it. All right. Well, that's enough selling to people. Yep. I got Thank you. Well, I got a question oh. before you oh, go. Oh shit! You just took your first animal with the rock stock. Are you getting an official review on that? I he did. didn't. He didn't have the stock on there. It was just form. Yeah. Nope. We. I oh, so I'm the just form and you. you and form. You've shot one before. I have. Tell us what you think. Uh, well, impact. I was able to spot it when I did hit the animal, and the shouldering was fantastic. I was able to get a clean shoulder shot. I wonder what form has to say about it, but yeah, recoil reduction as far as muzzle rise, unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's the thing that jumps off the page is, you know, I'm not cool enough to have a full-time one yet, but they're coming here soon. <laughs> but the ones I've shot, the re it is unbelievable. And we're still in that 10% that may not BS anybody, may have to move to medium rings to make it work. I am one of those. But the recoil reduction is ridiculous, especially mm -hmm. the barrel hop. There's hardly any muzzle rise. I'll put a slow-mo video up here soon. Yeah, Let's we see. did take a bunch of – we went and did a big practice session on Friday before we went and killed these elk, so mm -hmm. we got uh, plenty of slow motion video of the stock. All right. Anything else? That's it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thank you.